some of them have this incredible, incredible uh, sarcophagus, they call it, which the soldiers actually crawl inside of when the drone comes to pick them up, and that is to protect them. And there have been many examples where uh, the soldier was actually getting evacuated from a position, and the Russians were dropping grenades on top of the, the rover that was trying to actually get the Ukrainian soldier out. Um, and it was just bouncing off the top, exploding nearby, but the guy inside was surviving because of this, you know, metal uh, sarcophagus that was protecting him. Hello and welcome to the Future of War Times Radio Tech series on the technologies shaping the future of conflict and security globally. We're joined again by Richard Woodruff, founder of Frontline Kit, who works on both the technological and sometimes literal frontline of military innovation and manufacturing of drones uh, in, with the Ukrainian military in his volunteer group, Frontline Kit. Uh, Richard, thanks again for joining us. Dobro vecher, Louis. How are you? Good, thank you. And, uh, and yourself? Uh, we don't have any power now, actually. Uh, this, is, this, this whole studio setup is actually being powered off of a uh, little generator, so... Um, and not a loud generator, just a little backup, backup power source. But yeah, the, the whole uh, the whole city is completely black and dark right now. And uh, yeah, because of the Russian strikes a couple of nights ago. So, gosh, yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll 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 carry on and hope that uh, hope the backup generator sticks with us. Well, Richard, we we often think of most of the technological advancements in the war in Ukraine uh, as as kind of being a battle in the air, quadcopters, missiles, uh, and those sort of. Uh, aerial based weapons but there is also a wide variety of ground based drones that are used prolifically by Ukraine what should we know about ground based drones and their use by the Ukrainian military they are uh, unbelievably essential and more and more every everybody within the military is talking about them they're the number one thing that are being procured through the uh, brave one marketplace at the moment and uh, half of the time these are actually being used for medical evacuations and especially with the manpower shortages that we're having here in Ukraine, uh, drones are just more and more important every day to replace the roles uh, of a lot of guys on the ground that will otherwise have to put their self at risk. And, and why use these vehicles instead of just a traditional armoured vehicle or even a, a man crewed vehicle, you know? Very, very simple reason. Um, humans are very squishy and humans don't like artillery or FPV drones or being shot. Whereas a drone doesn't really mind. And uh, as I was just saying with the manpower shortages, uh, you can remake a robot, you can't remake a human being. Um, apart from, you know, the fact that we don't want people to die, uh, they're also incredibly, incredibly good at carrying a lot of weight. Uh, some of these ground drones can carry one and a half tons and also evacuate a couple of guys uh, in, in the opposite direction when they're returning. So. Uh, they're very, very capable and they have a lot more agility compared to modern vehicles because um, they're a lot of uh, a lot of a different platform. So you can have tracked ground vehicles and you can also have ones with wheels. And most of the time when you're doing normal evacuations, you're just using like a pickup truck, which may get stuck in certain situations. So um, a huge, huge impact. And... Presumably, it's a matter of weight at the moment. Is is the ground drone a kind of stopgap measure until aerial drones and quadcopters can lift more weight? Do you think, or or, or is it more useful to have something that is just based on the ground and and moves around, you know, across terrain using its tracks or its wheels? Yeah, this is one of the issues that you you'll always face with uh, aerial vehicles is you just cannot carry the capacity that you need to. Um, as I said a moment ago, one and a half tons, some of these ground vehicles can pull along. And with a drone, you're talking about 20, 30 kilograms uh, at the, the max end. You know, you have some Western Western drone manufacturers that can carry a couple of hundred kilograms. But then you're talking about a price that's 10, 20 fold that of a ground drone. So really, it is a cost per payload capacity. Um, how much does it cost you to get these supplies to the front lines? Um, and there's one specific example with a, a Russian drone where it actually only costs $10,000 to produce this drone and it, it, it is used for resupply. And then the Ukrainians have to do this calculation in their head of, okay, an artillery shell is three and a half, four thousand dollars $4,000. Do we spend two of these artillery shells trying to destroy something which, 
is the same worth as it? And then once again, do you try and hit it with FPV drones? Do you try and drop grenades on it? Um, and it all just comes down to a cost calculation of, ah, how much is the thing that's, you know, either doing a medical leave act or resupply and how much is it worth it for the Russians or the Ukrainians to actually destroy these things? And so these ground vehicles are being used, like many other drones, by both sides of this conflict as well. Yeah. Is there a similar uh, element as with uh, aerial drones where uh, Russian drones have a difference in quality or, or a, um, a design mentality behind them? Or are they actually trying to match the Ukrainians in terms of quality on these? Uh, they're trying to do them cheaper because I think they're, they're, they've started to understand uh, the Ukrainian way, which is just make as many of them as possible and as cheaply as possible and uh, run down the enemy's ability to destroy these things just from a cost basis because we all only have a certain number of ways to to combat these drones and yeah if it turns out to be more expensive then uh, it's not worth it and you might as well leave the drone and how crucial are these becoming for the logistics of war because last week we spoke about how prolific uh, you know fpv and fiber optic drones have become and how difficult that makes it for a person to move around the battlefield presumably that means just for moving equipment this drone has become very important it's the only way to do it um 20 kilometers from the zero line is just a complete killing field if you are spotted outside you are dead um, so you have to use these drones. And as I was saying earlier, with the manpower shortages that the Ukrainian army has, it's, it's we need to use as many of these ground drones to replace soldiers on the ground. And now uh, Ukraine is producing over 15,000 of these per year. And half of all of these are being used for medical evacuations. And it's it's just completely critical and essential because you cannot risk a guy's life to go save another one but you can expend, you know, a few drones to get the same result. Um, they're completely critical and you will see more and more of this coming over the next year of all of the different ways that you can use these drones. And and how does a drone like this actually conduct a medifac? I mean, if you, you presumably will have stories from the front of these things being used. Yeah, so uh, this is where our drones and also these uh, reconnaissance drones really, really come into uh, their own and very handy is because every single one of these ground drones has to be directed and guided to its final position and that is done through the use of these uh, Mavic drones they actually spot the whole battlefield and whilst these ground drones are going towards their target even though they do have optics on board so that they can see where they're going um, they are also directed from above because you need to see if the Russians have just laid a trap for this vehicle um, or, or any other obstacles that may have come during the way. And also you need to see the guy that you are trying to medically evacuate or the guys that you're trying to resupply on the other, other side. So uh, it's, it's completely essential to have um, a, a drone from above watching everything that's going on. And they're controlled in the same way as these aerial drones with the same like radio master controllers uh, over analog, analog signals. Um, some are trying with fiber optics, so they're completely unjammable. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, exciting and terrifying, but most importantly, life-saving equipment. And we, we talk about how those two pieces of kit work in tandem. Are these ground drones essentially the same as, a, is, is it essentially just a, a sort of the same as a, a quadcopter drone, but with wheels? Or is there something a bit more technologically distinct between these two pieces of kit? What makes up uh, a ground drone and, and how many different versions are there? I, I think there are over 200 versions currently being created by Ukrainian manufacturers, which is absolutely crazy. Um, the difference between that and an aerial drone, aerial drones are actually quite hard to fly. They don't have all of this automatic stabilization stuff. Um, and with the ground drones, if you lose signal or let go of the controller, nothing happens. It just, just sits there and waits for you to pick it back up. And the soldiers actually call them like mini, uh, not mini, but uh, just larger RC cars, because it's exactly the same thing as you would have played with it as a kid. So after just a couple of hours of training, uh, you can drive these things seamlessly. Um, and that, that really is the difference. It may take a few weeks to train a good FPV pilot, but just a couple of hours to get these ground drones uh, kind of running about. Uh, and what are the different versions of ground drone you can find? I mean, w what are the different models? What do they do? Um, are they all wheeled? Are they all tracked? What are the differences? 
Yeah, so there, there's this uh, really large one, which I'm trying to trying to remember the name of. Um, this is the one that can carry one and a half tons. Ah, it's called the Protector, and this is a Ukrainian-made vehicle, and it looks just like a jeep, but without the top, without the top, because you don't need to carry any people. Um, and uh, this operates in the same way as a car does. It has four wheels, and it can be used to carry huge weights and also do great medical evacuations. But then you also have these very, very miniature drones. Um, I believe they were called the, the Rovers. Uh, oh, the Courier. That was that was a little Russian one. And uh, they just carry anti-tank mines. And what these do is they put an anti-tank mine and you drive into the enemy trench and then you just remotely detonate. Because every single trench line now across the front has a uh, netting across it to stop FPV drones. Whereas they don't put netting across the bottom because they don't expect uh, a ground-based drone to come along. So a huge way that they are being used is just driving it into a trench line and just remotely detonating um, and destroying the whole trench because you're putting an anti-tank mine in there. It's not a small uh, 500 gram explosive or kilogram explosive like an RPG or grenade. It is a huge anti-tank mine with kilos and kilos of high explosive. And when we last met in Lviv at the Brave One Arms Expo, there were actually ground-based drones there on display that that had a they weren't kamikaze drones and they they had a sort of kill count of their own things that had machine guns attached to them uh and things like that what's the role now of drones being able to go out uh and and fire a weapon uh and and directly yeah. attack <laughs> russian soldiers or you know russian drones attacking ukrainian soldiers for that matter yeah uh they in my opinion uh they're used as kind of a distraction you you fire from a remotely controlled uh, gun drone in an opposite direction to get the Russians to focus whilst you're uh, sneaking around the back. Um, unfortunately, uh, with all guns, guns jam, and you need you need someone to actually physically go and unjam them, which isn't very convenient. And they only carry a few hundred rounds on these on these ground drones. So yes, they have been used, and yes, they have killed Russians, um, but they're much better used in a resupply and uh, uh, medical evacuation sense. Um, just because of the, the the use cases of them, and it's it's a lot easier to kill Russians with a an FPV drone like we make than a, a ground drone, which is a very heavy lifting thing. Um, yes, as I said, you can drive into a trench, but when you're trying to remotely fire, which I have done with these uh, ground drones with a turret on top, they actually let me control one of them, and they said, "You hold down this big red button, and it fires off shots." It was a very cool, fun experience. Um, but I don't think it's like the most accurate thing on the planet. And yeah, a Russian can just hit it with an FPV drone and it falls over, and uh, which they'll obviously do if it's shooting at them. Uh, and so some of these ground drones as well, and I suppose this applies to all drones, um, did have a sort of rudimentary uh, AI controlled targeting system. How much of a concern is that? I mean, are we at the point yet where where either side in this conflict are essentially deploying AI that is then going out and, and almost self-directedly killing other soldiers? There is AI involved, but uh, that, that it tends to be more with the aerial drone than the ground drones. Um, it, it's more a case of autonomy with these ground drones. And there are many, many cases, especially with resupply, where... You literally just click on a map and say, hey, Rover, uh, follow this pre-designated path, go there, drop off the supplies and head back. And and those paths are known. Uh, they're backed up with um, uh, repeater, repeater units to actually make sure that they don't lose signal uh, over the duration. Um, but most of the time, there's still going to be a guy sat behind it making sure it doesn't do something stupid because it's a robot. And no matter how much or artificial intelligence autonomy you give a little robot, it still might not know the difference between a big hole in the ground and a, a tree, you know? <laughs> you think it would, but there might be a bit of mud on the camera or something else. So uh, especially when we do have the pilots to be able to control them, it's not something that's really a critical thing or aspect of it right now. So it, it sounds like uh, in many ways, these ground drones are really, for, for Ukraine at least, a, a tool for saving lives more than yeah. anything else. Yeah, 100%. And half of all of them are being used for exactly that, for medical evacuations. Um, some of them have this incredible, incredible uh, sarcophagus, they call it, which the soldiers actually crawl inside of 
when the drone comes to pick them up, and that is to protect them. And there have been many examples where uh, the soldier was actually getting evacuated from a position, and the Russians were dropping grenades on top of the, the rover that was trying to actually get the Ukrainian soldier out. Um, and it was just bouncing off the top, exploding nearby, but the guy inside was surviving because of this, you know, metal uh, sarcophagus that was protecting him, as well as protecting from small arms fire and artillery shells uh, hitting nearby. So uh, really are a life-saving bit of kit. Well, Richard, it's uh, it's fascinating developments and, and hopefully one that our audience might not have seen too much of uh, before, as, as a lot of the focus, of course, is, as we've said, on, on uh, FPV and aerial drones. But thank you very much for giving us uh, all that detailed information and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll join us again soon on the future of war. Yeah, cool.